Hi, in this video, we're going to walk through the example from chapter three for segmentation. Now, before we even get into how to segment the customers, uh, given that we actually have the location of the customers, it might be worthwhile to actually look at where they're located uh, on a map. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by going into Tableau and visualizing where our customers are on a map. So when we look into Tableau, uh, we'll see here we have the opportunity to open a data file. We're going to go to File, Open. Now we're gonna look for the retail underscore segmentation file that came with the chapter. We'll hit open and this will open our data and we can see the data shows up in Tableau. This is what it should look like. We have our customer number and our, our variables. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to sheet one so we can start our visualization. So here in sheet one, one nice thing given that we have the zip code is that we can produce a map. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on zip code. And when we do that, we'll see that Tableau produces a map for us uh, where each of these dots represents one of the zip codes that's in our table. Now, if we want to see how different zip codes vary in terms of different variables, uh, we can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and look at how it looks using average order size. So if we drag average order size to marks color, we can see here that now each of the zip codes has an outline and we have a measure for average order size. Now in this case, average order size, it takes the sum and given that there are different numbers of people in each zip code, we're going to change that to the average. To do that, we just click on the down arrow and we're gonna choose measure average. So now we can see that on average, each of the zip codes and, and the different average order sizes from those customers. Now, if we would like to have uh, a more divergent colors, we can go to the top right here and click this down arrow, choose edit colors. And here we're going to change our, our palette to maybe orange blue diverging. And you'll see it really brightens up the picture and we can see a little more discrimination across the different zip codes here. The almost reddish color represents zip codes that have smaller average order sizes and the blue and even dark blue zip codes like this one represent areas where we have customers who on average have the largest average order sizes. So finally, if we want, we can name this uh, figure. So we're gonna double click here on sheet and we'll name this uh, average customer order size by zip code. Okay. So now we visualize the data. We can see the different zip codes. You can very easily change and use any of these different variables to, to see these different uh, variables by zip code. So we're gonna go ahead and save this Tableau workbook. So we'll click Save As. Now here, we're going to save it. We're gonna change this from a Tableau workbook to a Tableau packaged workbook. Tableau packaged workbooks are workbooks where it actually saves the data in the workbook. So if someone else opens this, they will have the data to go with it. So we'll change the name of this to segmentation map and save it in our chapter three folder. So now we've done this. Our next step is we want to actually do the segmentation analysis. So to start, what we'll need to do is we'll go over to R So R looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna start by opening the script that's provided with the chapter. So the chapter three script called segmentation. When we do that, we'll see here, this is the script file. I like to make it a little bigger so I can see it. So step one, uh, if there are any packages we need to load to help us, uh, we will do those first here. Uh, segmentation tools are part of the base package of R. We don't need to load any. So what we are going to start with then is we're going to start by setting our random number generating seed. So we can just highlight this and we'll hit run. So 
So that sets our, our seed. Next, we want to bring in the data. So we can highlight this row and run, and it'll say, where is this data located? It's going to be in chapter three. And it is the data called retail underscore segmentation. In case you want to look at the data that gets loaded in before you go and do the analysis, you can always click over to your console window and type head, open parentheses, and the name of the table. Here it's called seg, S-E-G, close parentheses, enter. And this will print out the top six rows of your data and all of its columns. So here we can kind of see what the data looks like. Next step uh, when we're running segmentation is to do the hierarchical clustering so we can decide how many segments are in our data. So here you can see we're going to run the hierarchical uh, clustering function on our different bases. We have these eight bases that are in our function. We're going to go ahead and highlight this and save the result of the hierarchical clustering in, a, in an object called seg underscore h clust. All right, so that ran pretty quickly. Now, the next step is we need to produce the elbow plot to help us so we can decide how many segments we want to choose uh, based on the data we have. So in order to do that, we're going to highlight this section. We'll hit run. We'll see it generates a figure for us. Now, the figure of the elbow, we're looking for where the elbow bends. So we can see here it's going down pretty quickly as we go. And right around here, we're starting to see the elbow and the elbow plot bend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick six as my number of segments. You could choose different numbers depending on how you justify. Uh, maybe you choose five, maybe something else. But I'm going to choose six because that seems to be where this elbow uh, is flattening out uh, as it goes. So we'll go ahead and close this window and go back to our analysis. So if you chose a different number than six, you would change this number here uh, to whatever number of clusters you picked. Otherwise, you can highlight this section and this will run the k-means cluster analysis on those same basis variables and save the result into seg underscore k means. All right, so that ran pretty quickly. So now we, we want to take the segment that each customer was assigned to and add it back to our original data table and then export that data table uh, out so we can use it in Tableau. So in this step, what we're doing is we're going to take the cluster number that people are assigned to, our customers, and just save it as a variable called segment. And then we're going to add that column to our data. So this is a column binding uh, function that just takes, says take our original data and let's add that new column called segment. Once we run that, we have uh, the new data set called segmentation underscore result, which has that segment column. If we want to see it again, we can click over to our console, type head, in this case, segmentation result. And here we'll see the first six rows of that data. And of course, the last column here now has the segment assignment for each of the customers in our data. So finally, we're going to export that data out into uh, a comma separated value file so that we can open it into Tableau. To do that, we'll run this. We're going to save it in the chapter three folder, and this one we'll call segmentation underscore result dot CSV. We don't have a file there named that, so we're going to go ahead and create it. All right, so now we have that file that we need to then go back to Tableau and do the visualization of the tables. So we'll go back to our Tableau. We see that we still have got the map up. We're going to just open a new Tableau workbook. So now we should be able to see our, our second Tableau workbook, book two that we've opened. And here we're going to open that data set that we just created with that segment column. So we'll go to file, open, segmentation result. 
And again, our data will show up here. We can scroll to the right and see that this data should have that segment column on the end, which is going to be useful for us to uh, show you how to look at the data by segment. So we're going to go to sheet one to begin to visualize the results of the data. Now, the first thing that we need to do once we're in Tableau is Tableau tries to interpret what kind of data you loaded in. Here, it's assuming that segment is a measure because it's just a bunch of integers between one to six based on the number of segments we have. So we're going to tell Tableau that this isn't a measure, but it's in fact a dimension that we're going to use to group people by. So to do that, we right click on segment, we choose convert to dimension, and you'll see that segment now shows up in the dimensions part. Uh, and that's going to help us actually see the different bases and descriptors by segment. So first on this sheet, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the average values of the bases by the different segments so that we can uh, see sort of what are the differences across the segments based on these bases. So to start, I'm going to drag segment over here to columns, and you'll see it's going to now sort by the, these six different segments that we have. So next step, uh, we're going to actually put the um, eight different bases into this table. Uh, we can do that by just double clicking on them and it'll move them into the, the marks area. So we're going to put in the average marketing count, order frequency, order size, cross by, multi-channel, percent on sale, return rate, and tenure. So you can see now we've got all these bases. Now it is putting the variables by default in as the sums. And given there's different numbers of people in each segment, we're gonna go ahead and change this to the averages. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on the first one. You see it gets a little darker. I'll hold down shift and I'll click down to the bottom. It highlights all of them. I'll click on this down arrow and choose measure average. And now it's the average values of the different measures by segment. So the next step, I might want to know, for instance, how many customers are in each segment. To do that, we'll just take segment and we'll drag it down here and put it in the measure values. Now, it's a dimension, so it can't take the sum of a dimension. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to just going to need to tell segment or tell tab Tableau that we want not the sum, but we actually want just the count. So we're going to choose count. And now we'll see the count of the number of customers in each segment. At this point, we can also do things that are helpful to us, like, for instance, create calculated fields that might help us with identifying which segment might be attractive. So we're going to go ahead and create two calculated field measures. Uh, we can do that by either right clicking over here in this white space and create calculated field, or we can go to analysis down to create calculated field. So the first calculated field we want to use is uh, we're going to create one called sales per year. Now, sales per year is a combination of these other bases variables. Uh, so what we can do is start typing the name of the variables and Tableau will help us uh, as we go. So our first variable we want is average order size. And you can see Tableau puts brackets around it to say that it identifies as a variable. And we're going to multiply that times average order frequency. Right? And we're going to multiply that times 1 minus the return rate. There. So now we have how much, how big you've purchased, how much you've purchased in terms of dollars times how many times, and then subtract out how often you return products. So this should be sales per year per customer. We can also create a calculated field called profit per year. In this case, this will be the sales per year. We know our average margin is 52%. And then we want to subtract off our marketing costs. We know that our uh, average marketing count tells us how many times we reached out to you. And we know that each one cost on average about 75 cents. So here we're going to take how much revenue you generate or margin, so revenue times our margin, minus our marketing cost. 
So now we have uh, measures of sales and profit per year. So we can go ahead and add those to the table. So we'll add sales, we'll add profit down here at the bottom. Now, what we can see is we, we have our table put together. What we might want to do is one, make the, the fonts a little bigger so we can read it a little better. So to do that, we can go to format font. And here for our worksheet, we're going to change it. Maybe we'll go ahead and change it to say font of 16. You can see got a little bigger. Next thing we might want to do is we notice here that Tableau likes to round numbers because we have no decimals. If these, since these are percentages, we might want to see the actual percentage. We can go to analysis, table layout, advanced, and we can tell Tableau that we would like, say, two decimal places. All right, so now we can see here the actual numbers. We might also want to drag this over a little bit so we can see all the names of the variables. And lastly, we might want to name this table. In this case, we're going to name it average values of bases by segment. So now we have our table with our average values of bases by segment, uh, where we can then look at differences across these segments to identify profiles of these different customers in these different segments. Now, what we can do next is we can do the same thing for the descriptors. So if we go down here and click uh, create a new worksheet, we can again create a table, this time for our descriptors. So to start, we're going to move segment again over to columns. And here we'll go ahead and put our descriptors in. So we have age, uh, we have household size, income, loyalty card, married, own home, right? So these are uh, the, the five different descriptors we have. Again, if we want, we want to change these from a sum to an average, I'll click the first one, hold down shift, highlight all of them. We're going to change that to measures average. Okay. Um, so now we have here again the, the average values uh, for the different segments for their descriptors. Again, if we want, we can bring segment down here so we can see segment size. Remember, we just need to change this to count. Uh, we might want to make this bigger like we did before. To do that, format font. Again, we'll go here to worksheet and change this to 16. We might want to see more decimal places, especially for these uh, percentages. So we can choose analysis, table layout, advanced, and choose two decimal places. We'll move this first column over a little bit so we can see the names of the variables. And we'll go ahead and name this sheet average values of descriptors by segment. So now we have a table that will help us profile these different segments by their descriptors that might lead us to doing some discriminant analysis and classification, which we will then look at in chapter four. All right, so our final step is we're just gonna go ahead and save this. So we'll do save as, again, we'll save it as a packaged workbook so that the data is included. And here we will call this segmentation results. So now we have the map that we created that we can look at different ways to slice and dice our variables by, in this case, by zip code. We ran in R, the segmentation analysis, first hierarchical clustering for the number of segments with the elbow plot, then the k-means to assign the segment numbers to the different um, customers. Then we brought the data over into Tableau and created these uh, Tableau uh, tables uh, to visualize by bases and by descriptors.